Hi, I'm Sarah with the Hobby Lobby Creative Studio. Welcome to our Sew This Bedroom series. Today, I'm going to show you how to take a plain bench from simple to simply unique. For a full list of everything you'll need to make a cute ottoman like this for yourself, check out the printable for this video. After you've got your supplies gathered, you'll want to paint or finish your ottoman as desired. I've already primed and painted mine black, so let's get started. With your foam laying out, Flip your ottoman upside down onto the foam and trace around the top edges. Next, cut out your foam. I'm just using fabric scissors, but you could also use an electric or serrated knife, just whatever is most convenient for you. You will also need a piece of paper the size of the top of your ottoman, so go ahead and trace and cut that out as well. I'll explain why in just a minute. Now we need to get our fabric measurement. Start by measuring the top of your ottoman. Mine is 30 inches by 14 inches. Now, place your cut piece of foam on top. Measure the depth of the foam and include the lip of your ottoman. Mine is three inches. To give you plenty of fabric to fold under and staple around the edges, I recommend adding two more inches to this depth. So this means I'll need to add five inches to all my sides so I have plenty to wrap underneath and staple in place. This gives me a starting fabric size of 40 inches by 24 inches. I've cut out my fabric so my design is centered left to right and top to bottom. Keep this in mind when choosing and cutting your own fabric and how it will fit on your ottoman. So now I'm ready to find the button placement so we can drill the holes in the top of our bench. Place your foam on top of your ottoman. Then the paper you cut out earlier on top, keeping it all in place with a bit of masking tape. Lay out your fabric on top and make sure the design is centered if needed. Now, because of the fabric I'm using, I want my buttons to be centered and evenly spaced according to the design of the fabric. So I'll first lay out my buttons to find the placement. Once you get them where you want them, just stick your upholstery needle through the fabric and paper wherever the middle of each button will be. This creates a paper template for us to use to drill our holes. If you're using a fabric that has a very uniform design like I am, making a template like this allows you to place your buttons perfectly according to your fabric's design. If you're using a simpler fabric, you could just lay out the buttons directly onto your ottoman, make your marks, and drill your holes. Now I'll put my paper template to use and drill the holes. Set your material and foam aside and re-stick your paper template directly on top of your ottoman and you're ready to drill your holes. Now, we used a 5 16 drill bit because we need to make our holes large enough so that our upholstery needle can fit through them easily. So once you've got all your holes drilled, the next step is to adhere your foam to the top of the ottoman. We'll start by using spray adhesive to adhere our foam to our ottoman. So be sure and follow the precautions listed on the can before using. Now, just apply spray adhesive to the top of the ottoman at one end and press down to stick. Then move to the other end, spraying and pressing the rest of the foam into place. Drape your fabric back over your foam, placing it in the same position as before. This time, secure it with quite a few straight pins around the top edges to hold the fabric in place. How you actually wrap and staple the fabric could be different depending on the piece of furniture that you're using. I'll show you how to do it for this bench, but just keep in mind that you may have to change things up a bit to work for your furniture. Start with the ottoman on its top with the front side facing you. Working from the middle, start by folding and pulling the fabric up around the edge of the ottoman. I want to pull tight enough to remove any slack, but not so tight that it smashes the edge of the foam. Holding it tight, add a couple of staples. Staple as close to the inner sides of the ottoman as possible. If some of your staples don't quite go in all the way, just use a small hammer to tap them down into place. Continue stapling down this side, stopping about four inches short of the corners. Go ahead and staple the other two sides the same way, stopping again about four inches short of the corners. Now you're ready to fold and finish your corners. Think of this part kind of like how you would fold the corners of a gift. You're going to tuck one side under the other to create a nice clean corner. With your ottoman standing upright and the front edge facing you, go ahead and remove all the straight pins. 
Tuck the fabric that comes around from the side under the fabric on the front, like this. Now, fold or tuck the front fabric so that it forms a straight up and down fold at the corner and place a pin in it to keep it in place. Pull your excess fabric around the bottom as if you're going to staple it in place. Give yourself an extra inch of fabric so you can fold it under to create a clean edge and trim off the excess. Removing some of the bulk now will help make it easier when we're ready to staple our corners. Go ahead and finish prepping the other three corners by folding and pinning them in place and cutting off any excess fabric. Once you've got that done, you're ready to staple them in place. Now, with your ottoman top side down, start with the front edge facing you. Beginning at one of the corners, remove the pin. Double check that the fabric is still pulled around the corner nice and taut, and I like to go ahead and secure it with a staple here to hold it in place while I work with the rest of the fabric. Now, pull the fabric around to the bottom. Fold it under as much as is needed to avoid bunching around the leg and staple it in place. Repeat the same process for the other three corners. Add some fabric adhesive to the inside of the fold on each corner to secure them and give them a nice, clean, finished look. With your corners secured in place, you're ready to tuft your ottoman with some adorable buttons. Go ahead and cover your buttons with your fabric according to the kit's instructions. Once you've got that done, we're ready to add them to our ottoman. Start by laying your paper template back on top of your fabric so you can find where your buttons need to go. Just use a disappearing ink pen to make a mark through the paper onto the fabric for each button. Then remove the template. Keep in mind these marks are just giving you a general idea of where your holes are drilled. Be sure to center your buttons up according to your fabric's design. Next, measure out the upholstery thread you'll need for each button. You'll need about two yards for each, so go ahead and cut the total amount needed. Starting with one of your strands of thread folded in half, grab a button and guide the thread through about halfway. Take one end of your thread and thread it through your needle. Then, Take the other end of your thread and thread it through your needle in the opposite direction. Doing it this way is good for tufting because it makes it more difficult for the thread to slip out as you push the needle through the fabric and foam. With your ottoman standing upright, guide your upholstery needle down through the fabric, the foam, and finally through the hole in the ottoman. Unthread your needle and lay it aside. With the ottoman on its side, Get a firm grasp on all the threads. With your other hand, reach around to the top and push the button down into the foam as far as you want while pulling on the threads. Put a staple over the thread close to the hole where the thread is coming through. Then, pull the threads up against the staple and staple again. Repeat this a couple more times, pulling the thread against the staple and securing in place. Finish your ottoman by repeating this process and adding all your buttons. Once they're all in place, you're ready to put it at the foot of your bed or even under a window sill. You could even use this tutorial to make a padded bench for your dining room table. Everyone needs another comfy place to sit. Well, that's all for today, everyone. Be sure to check out our other videos in our Sew This Bedroom series, and we'll see you next time here at the Hobby Lobby Creative Studio.